This is Tomo News for Thursday, May 18th. Hey, chef, we really got to hand it to you. A high-profile chef nearly lost his hand on Sunday when it got stuck in a pasta machine at his upmarket Philadelphia restaurant. Pasta Masta Joe Chicala was rolling dough on Mother's Day when he thought it would be a good idea to experiment with fancy schmancy grano arso flour and charred wheat berries. Mamma mia, that's definitely not the way mama used to make it. Anyway, Chef Joe added too much water to the mix, making the dough sticky. So he reached into the machine to try to force it through. And that's when he heard a sound like exploding popcorn. It was the sound of his bones being crushed. All alone in the kitchen, Joe asked Siri to call for help. And when the paramedics arrived, they gave him a shot of morphine and put the machine in reverse to release his trapped hand. Chef Joe was rushed to the hospital, and luckily, doctors were able to reattach the crushed bones in his hand with minimal nerve damage. However, he may lose feeling in his pinky finger forever. Chef Joe is currently doped up on prescription drugs as he recovers from his ordeal. He expects to be back in the kitchen in about six weeks. Careful where you put your fingers there, Joe. Lion fights crocodile in river to save younger brother. A couple of male African lions crossing a river in Botswana got a deadly surprise when they came under attack by one of the nastiest predators around, a massive crocodile. Photos and footage of the epic battle published recently were captured by tourists on safari last month, tracking two lion brothers trying to cross the Lanyanti River when they suddenly spotted a dangerous threat swimming toward them across the pond. The enormous crocodile approached with speed, but the younger lion did not detect him. Big mistake! Out of their element, the bloodthirsty croc unleashed a sneak attack. Refusing to watch his little bro be killed, Big Bro swam into fight. Trading places in the underwater ring of death, Big Bro was pulled down by the croc underwater as his kid brother was able to swim away. The brave lion, probably having had run-ins with the reptiles before, also managed to get away, pulling himself out of the water and into the reeds by the riverside. Following the close call, Big Bro quickly gathered himself only to see Little Bro had retreated to where they'd first entered the water. When Big Bro returned home for the siblings to reunite, he found Little Bro getting it on with a girl. While the older sibling could have challenged for mating rights to the female, Big Bro reportedly opted to let his little bro have it. Brotherly love redefined. Wow, nature, just wow. Wanna cry hackers are crying all the way to the bank. Ransomware hackers may have been able to lock thousands of computers around the world over this past week, but they haven't had much success getting their victims to pay up. Around 300,000 computers have been infected with WannaCry ransomware, but the hackers have only received just over $80,000 in Bitcoin ransom payments. That's roughly 25 cents per infected computer. Security experts say the hackers will find it difficult to spend the money because although Bitcoin can be held in anonymous accounts, anyone can see those accounts online and view a record of transactions. The hackers targeted a weakness in Windows XP, but experts said people still using that operating system were unlikely to be tech savvy and thus are unfamiliar with Bitcoin. This led experts to question whether the hackers were motivated by money or had a political agenda. Although this isn't conclusive evidence, some of the code in the WannaCry malware has previously been used by hackers believed to be based in North Korea. So were the hackers just hapless in their attempts to cash in? Or was the WannaCry attack driven by some shady political maneuvering? According to one security expert, the answer lies somewhere in the murky middle. The only sure thing is, this won't be the last we've seen of global ransomware attacks. Limitless blood supply is not too far off. It's taken nearly two decades, but scientists may finally have the recipe to create stem cells, that wellspring of life and holy grail of regenerative medicine. A Boston research team programmed human pluripotent stem cells to become endothelial cells, which typically line the inside of blood vessels. These were injected with special proteins called transcription factors, then transplanted into mice. Weeks later, the cells had multiplied and in some cases formed a wide range of human blood cells in the mice's bodies. A second research team used blood cells from mice and injected them with a mix of transcription factors. The cells morphed into stem cells after incubating in petri dishes designed to mimic a human blood vessel environment. 
When injected into weak mice that had been treated with radiation, the stem cells regenerated both blood and immune cells. The mice recovered and went on to live full lifespans. The groundbreaking research from both teams provides hope for patients who suffer from blood cancers and other diseases. But tests need to be carried out to determine any negative effects before the procedure can go to human trials. Folk contraceptive may lead to molecular condoms. Researchers at UC Berkeley say two commonly used plant-based folk remedies could lead to the development of non-hormonal contraceptives. A protein known as ABHD2 is an essential enzyme that binds to progesterone to trigger the cation channels of sperm known as catspur. When the channels open, calcium atoms flood into the sperm cell, providing the power kick to the tail for the sperm to enter the egg. Two natural compounds can block the ABHD2 protein. One compound is prostimerin, commonly found in the thunder god vine plant. The other is lupole, found in plants such as aloe vera, dandelion root, and mango. When the protein is blocked, it is no longer able to trigger the opening of the catspur channel. As a result, the sperm loses its power kick and thus is unable to penetrate the egg. Researchers said the discovery could lead to the development of either an emergency contraceptive or a permanent contraceptive. Duck ramps installed in DC. Some good news out of Washington for once. Duck ramps have been installed at the Capitol Reflecting Pool, located on the east side of the National Mall. The move was implemented on May 15th by Capitol officials in charge of preserving the historic grounds, in an effort to lend a hand to the resident flock of ducks who return to the area every spring. The pool's an awesome tub for the mallards, but the limestone curbs make it difficult for baby ducklings to get in and out of the water. With a little practice, they'll be running up those ramps in no time. What a nice thing to do for our feathered friends, right? Well, actually, some don't agree, namely Republican Congressman Mark Walker, who ruffled the feathers of the internet by tweeting out, if it looks like a duck and walks like a duck, it must be government waste. Jeez, talk about a Debbie Downer. Walker's comments were quick to set off a mudslide of mocking tweets by users as their way of politely flipping him the bird, so to speak. User Eric Fernandez struck back with, Donald Trump has made 21 trips to the golf course in 16 weeks, and this dumbass is talking about government wasting? Nice one, Eric. User Infinite Just Like Your heckled, imagine going from being an obscure congressional nobody to that f who hates ducklings. Haha. <laughs> and user Noel chimed in, next up, puppies, rainbows, and mini muffins. Man, if they even think about trying to take our mini muffins away, that's when things will really get ugly. But it's nice to know one silly goose in Congress can't spoil all the fun. Now that the ramps are in place, no longer will we see any innocent little ducklings drowning from exhaustion or dying from starvation because they can't get out of the water. Just more of this. Fetal Pacemaker Ready for Human Trials Researchers at the University of Southern California first developed a micro pacemaker for fetuses five years ago, and the device is now ready for its first human trial. The fetal pacemaker is a slim cylinder with components that include a single transistor relaxation oscillator, an epoxy capsule, and a small lithium battery. The pacemaker is implanted into a fetus through a 3.8 millimeter diameter insertion cannula. The battery is able to power the device for about a week. When the power runs low, a high-powered field generator can be used to generate a radio frequency magnetic field outside the body. This wirelessly recharges the battery through inductive coupling. The device, which has been successfully tested in sheep fetuses in the past, was granted humanitarian use in 2015 by the FDA. Two crocodile attacks in the same Indonesian river terrify locals. In the space of 24 hours, crocodiles have attacked two people at the Mempawa River in Indonesia's West Kalimantan province, according to local media. And these two are just the latest. Back in April, a croc attacked an elderly woman as she bathed in the river's cool water. And on the morning of April 15th, her 40-year-old daughter, Sumiyati, was next. At around 6.30 a.m., Sumiyati was brushing her teeth and preparing to bathe in the river. She never saw the crocodile stalking her from behind. Then the beast lunged, grabbing her right leg in its jaws. It tried to drag her into the water, but Sumiyati held onto a toilet ladder for dear life. She managed to get free of the giant reptile, but not before it left deep wounds on her thigh. 
Just 12 hours earlier, a four-year-old boy named Justin fell victim to a crocodile in the same river. Justin, along with his brother, mother, and grandmother, were bathing in the river as they do almost every evening. Media reports say his mother heard a loud splash and jerked around to see Justin wrenched into the water. She at first thought he'd slipped, but realized the horrible reality after the boy's grandmother started screaming. The animal had seized the kid's neck, causing deep lacerations. He was rushed to a nearby medical clinic and doctors say the boy will live. Alarmed by the recent attacks, local police say residents should exercise extreme caution when using the river, especially after heavy rains or when the water is high. Solar window blinds can block and harvest sunlight. A California startup has designed window blinds with solar panels that can block out sunlight while harvesting solar energy from it. Each slat in solar window blinds is equipped with monocrystalline solar panels, which can harvest solar energy. The blinds can also track the path of the sun's position and automatically change the angle of the slats to optimize its absorption of sunlight. The company claims the blinds are able to generate up to 100 watt-hours of energy for every square meter when mounted on the outside of a window, or half that amount when mounted inside. Although the slats can automatically change their angles, the blinds can also be manually controlled via an app. The company is hoping to raise $50,000 from Kickstarter in order to mass-produce the solar window blinds.